if you need to connect to your Raspberry Pi via SSH but don't know where to start, this guide is for you. If you're trying to set up a Raspberry Pi for something 3D printer related, perhaps installing Clipper or Octoprint, you'll likely have to communicate with it directly via SSH. If you're normally a PC user, this might be completely foreign to you. So this is a short tutorial on how to connect to your Pi and the most useful basic commands. It is possible to connect a display as well as an input like a keyboard to a Raspberry Pi, but with 3D printing we don't have these so we use it headless. Therefore the way we connect is via Secure Shell, also known as SSH. Essentially this allows us to log in and control the Pi remotely. Now Windows actually has an SSH client built in and I'm always told to use it, but whenever I try to open it, nothing happens. That's why I still use a free piece of software called Putty. Putty is free, open source and designed for Windows to provide SSH functionality. We can follow the download link and then for most people, they're gonna to click to download the Windows installer. Installing the software is very straightforward using a setup wizard. To proceed from here, our Pi must have networking and SSH enabled. If you've followed one of my guides or any of the official documentation for Clipper or Octoprint, that won't be a problem. If for some reason you don't have SSH enabled, I've linked an article below that will help you with that. What we need is the IP address of our Pi on our local network. And that can either be found on the browser address for our Pi, or by logging into our router and seeing the addresses of the connected devices. We can now open PuTTY and enter that IP address in the box labeled host name. If you want to save this address for in future, you can type in the name of your printer and then click save. When you open PuTTY in future, you can connect to the printer by double clicking the name, but for this first time, we'll just click open. The first time you connect to a Raspberry Pi, you'll get the security message. It is completely normal, so you can click accept. The default username is Pi and the default password is Raspberry. You'll notice here that we have a warning saying to change the default password and we do that by typing passwd. We type in the old password and then the new one twice. Let's go over some basics that will be helpful if you're coming from Windows. Firstly, navigating directories. And if we type ls, it will list the contents of a current directory with everything shown in blue being folders that we can navigate to. To do that, we type cd for choose directory and then type the name of the folder. We can see from the prompt that we're now in the scripts folder. And again, we can type ls to see what's in there. To move up a directory, we type cd space and then two full stops. To avoid typing out a long name, such as MJPEG streamer, we can type CD and then start typing the name. And if what we have is unique, we can press the tab key and the rest will be filled in for us. Next, we cover copying and pasting because quite often we'll be following instructions from a website that we need to paste into PuTTY. In Windows, we can highlight text, Control C to copy and then Control V to paste. In PuTTY, anything that's highlighted is automatically copied to the clipboard and any time we need to paste, we simply right click. If we're copying from something external like a website, we highlight, Control C to copy, and then in PuTTY right click to paste. And if we're copying from PuTTY, we simply highlight to copy, and then Control V to paste. Perhaps a little bit counterintuitive, but easy once you get used to it. Another command you'll come across quite frequently is sudo, which stands for super user do. More or less, this gives you admin privileges to perform certain tasks. One time you might need these privileges is when editing files. So let's navigate to and open up a common file. I want to edit config.txt in the boot directory. So I'm going to type in sudo nano, which is the name of a file editor, and then the name of the file. When you use sudo, it's going to ask for the admin password, and this is the same one you logged in with. What we're seeing here is the interface for nano, which is a built-in text editor. Any line with a hash at the start means it's a comment and won't be read by the operating system. Otherwise, we can use the arrow keys to navigate the cursor to where we need to go, and we can copy, paste, delete, and edit as we need to. We can see we have some keyboard shortcuts down the bottom, and this up pointing arrow is the control key. So once we're finished editing, we can do control X for exit, and we'll be asked if we want to save our changes, and most of the time the answer will be yes. If we try to do this without sudo, 
we would have received an error saying that we didn't have enough privileges to edit the file. One last handy feature is the inbuilt configuration tool and to access it we type sudo raspy hyphen config. This will give us a graphical user interface where we can control many general aspects of the Raspberry Pi. For instance, whether we want the Pi to boot into the console or a desktop and whether or not we want it to log in automatically. We can also update our networking information. When we're done, we press the side arrow keys to go to finish and after rebooting the Pi, any changes you've made will come into effect. One last free program for Windows to make your life easier. If you just want to place or retrieve files on the Pi, you don't need to use PuTTY to do that with a text interface. Instead, we can use the free software WinSCP. When we launch it, we'll be prompted to log in to a remote connection. And once again, we're gonna enter the IP address of the Pi underneath the host name. Our username will be Pi, and everything else we leave as is. Like PuTTY, we can save to have it listed in future down the left-hand side, but for now, we're gonna click login. Like PuTTY, we'll get a warning message the first time we connect this is normal and we can click yes. And finally, we'll be prompted for our password, the same one we logged in with when using PuTTY. This program is very simple. On the left hand side, we have a folder from our Windows PC. And on the right hand side, we have the folders from the Raspberry Pi. We can navigate through them by double clicking the icons. For instance, let's go to that same boot directory as before. Let's say I wanted to copy a file from the Pi to the desktop, I can simply drag and drop. And of course it works in reverse, for placing files from your computer back onto the Raspberry Pi. As a bonus for text files, we can also double click them and assuming you're using a friendly text editor such as Notepad++, you can freely edit the file and when you save, the file on the Pi will be updated. That's it. With these basics, you'll be able to follow the vast majority of guides you'll find for setting up Clipper, Octoprint or other Raspberry Pi projects. Thank you for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.